Okay, good morning, everybody. We're gonna get started with Eureka Mathematics Module 1. The MySTEM network has been the catalyst to convene over 25 stakeholders in the space of mathematics education in the state, and they have worked to build a strategic plan. We saw three main areas of work come up to the top. The first one was culturally responsive mathematics, making sure that all students see themselves as worthy and belonging in the space of mathematics. The second one was around foundational mathematics, so building on math recovery work that has been in the state, thinking about how do we make sure that pre-K to five students have that essential knowledge that is going to help them take advantage of more advanced STEM work in middle school, high school, and beyond. And then the third area is what we call 3P, so project, problem, place-based learning. And how do we make sure that all students are seeing why do they need to learn math? That's the classic question, right? Especially when you get into the higher level in high school. And so thinking about how can we get hands-on, authentic learning happening in classrooms, but also get beyond the four walls of the classroom and get out into communities to see what's happening in business and really solve problems that are right in their backyard and using STEM and especially mathematics to solve those problems. Culture responsive teaching focuses on looking at things in your community and relating math back to your community. Culturally responsive mathematics is a way of really bringing who students are into the classroom space. It's a way of showing students that what they believe and who they are is important even in a mathematics space. And that mathematics isn't just about what's in our textbooks. It's about our everyday lives. It's about how we use what we learn outside of the classroom. Culturally Responsive Mathematics asks educators to be reflective about their own practices. Why am I creating these experiences in the classroom for my student? How is it serving them? And specifically centering my students' previous understandings. How might I leverage that to connect them to the content? Anything that you do culturally responsive has to personally be related to you, so you were spot on when you said it was something personal. So the Tri-County Culture Responsive Mathematics Institute has been a phenomenal opportunity to collaborate with three ISDs, so Wayne Risa, Oakland Schools, and with Washington ISD. And the three of us have come together to really curate a variety of programs that support teachers in developing culture responsive classrooms. We have had four different series. So one is our leadership series where leaders are brought into spaces and are able to get professional learning. And then we have the Summer Institute where high school students, pre-service teachers, and teachers all come together and co-construct math lessons that are culturally responsive. We also have our cohort connect so the teachers from the Summer Institute get to come back and meet once a month as a networking event to get support, get ideas. And then we have the Meaningful Mathematics Showcase, which is a phenomenal space for students to showcase their genius. And they get to show how their identity has shown in their mathematics. What mathematical skills are they using? How are their knowledge expanded? And then why is this important for the real world? You do really sometimes have literal light bulbs that seem to go off in front of people's heads. Oh, I get it now. If I can at least change the student's perception that they're not bad at math, you know, you don't have to love it, but they're gonna have to use it. And not everybody's starting at the same place, but we want them all to make growth. That's good. Math recovery is a opportunity for teachers to get professional development. And it's a way for teachers to really figure out where kids are in their math abilities. What number? Five. Yes, five. I think often when we give unit assessments or we give NWEAs, we figure out what kids don't know. And so the assessments that Math Recovery brings to us allows us to figure out where kids are and what their strengths are. There's a series of courses that teachers can participate in that helps them to understand how kids go through this process of developing knowledge and learning in a way that is more exploratory for them and gives teachers an opportunity to see what is it that kids know and have and how do I move them forward to that next level. The new skills I find myself applying more often is just putting myself in my student's shoes and how they are thinking about math. And so when I do like an assessment with them or one-on-one, -on -one, as I watch them use a strategy, I remember that strategy to help to teach them a little bit more. Maybe teach them a different strategy that might work or enhance that strategy that they know so that they can solve problems. 
When using math recovery, it doesn't have to be a planned portion of your classroom time. It could be an impromptu activity that's occurring at choice time and a teacher could enter into play and observe and listen and take content, understanding and knowledge that the student is sharing with her and kind of build upon it. So allowing the child to play through the process and allowing math to truly come alive within a learning environment. I think the best thing about math recovery is that it's not like one more thing you have to teach. It actually gives you the resources and the tools that you need to teach better and to teach kids where they are developmentally. Foreman, you are allowed to touch the balsa wood now to construct building up. It's a big day, isn't it? 3P learning is place-based learning, project-based learning, and problem-based learning. Place-based learning, we're taking a problem or a project that we can do within our communities or in with our environment where we're learning, where our students are learning, and we're applying that through our educational system to make not only a great learning experience for students, but a way that they can engage in their community or in their environment and make an impact. There might be a need that an organization has in a community or a problem that a business is trying to solve. And rather than that organization or business saying, here, here's some funding to do whatever in your school, you, you can actually say, hey, how could the students help them to come up with a solution for their problem? Or how could the students build something for their organization? One of my favorite projects we've done is we built an eight-sided hunting blind. My students up here hunt, you know, so that's one that's relevant to them. I take taken pictures because my dad has one. And I was like, okay, you guys, this is what it's gonna look like. And my students were like, nope, we can do it better than that. They used angle sum theorem to figure out the top and bottom plates, so they were one unit. We had to use trig to figure out our roof angles. And I told them like, I can help you with the math. They're like, no, we don't need you, we got it. And they built it perfectly. For me, my personal experience, sitting at a desk and just doing worksheets based off of what you were taught on the board, you never learn from it the right way. When you are able to apply what you learn and use it, it makes such a big difference. Learning to teach this way, it's really empowering because it takes the pressure off of me as a teacher. I don't have to know everything. All the time I'm saying like, I don't know, let's figure it out. And then we do that together. Our first place winner is Team Six with 94,800. Can we give them three claps on three? One, two, three. The goals of the Math Action Area are intended to elevate the foundational development of mathematics and build this community of educators, teachers, administrators, and families to really build up the way we teach math and the way that kids learn math. This is a way for students to bring math to life. This is a way for them to really see that what they're doing is important. It's a way for them to get beyond the, when am I ever going to use this? Why do I need to know this? It's a pathway and a bridge to so many opportunities. If they can see how it's going to be useful, they'll be innovative, they'll be excited, and they will learn and they will grow in this space. And it'll be something that they want to do, not something that they have to do.